Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the six pathfinders that are in the Pathfinder panel in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, in a previous video, I talked about the four shape modes that are in the Pathfinder panel. And in that video, I only used two objects in the examples, but actually, you can use multiple objects with any of the tools that are in the Pathfinder panel. You just need to experiment with them to find out how Illustrator treats each of the layers. In this video, I'm going to be using three or more objects in each of the examples because I want you to get a better idea of how these Pathfinder tools actually work. First, we need to access the Pathfinder panel, and it's not showing right now in the Properties panel because I don't have any objects selected on my artboard. If I select two or more objects, you're going to see the four shape modes that are part of the Pathfinder panel, but if you click on this little ellipsis here, it's going to open up the rest of them. Now, the problem is that every time I use one of these lower tools, after I use it, and click somewhere else, it's going to close that panel. And I want it to stay open because I'm going to be using those tools throughout the video. So I'm going to go up to Window and come down to Pathfinder. The keyboard shortcut for that is Shift-Command-F9. I'll click here, and that gives me a floating Pathfinder panel, which I can either dock up next to the Layers panel, or I can just leave it right over here on top of the Properties panel, and that's going to work just fine. So let's begin with the Divide Pathfinder. I already have my first three objects selected here, and when I use the Divide Pathfinder tool, I'm going to expect Illustrator to separate all of these shapes. I'll click on the icon, and then I'll ungroup these, keyboard shortcut, Shift Command G. Then I can pull my rounded rectangle away, and the part that is overlapping of my square has become a separate piece. And because the blue is on top, that's the color that this piece has been given. And the same is true with the green circle. I can pull the circle away, and the piece that was a part of the circle that was overlapping the rectangle has become its own piece, and it maintained the green color, which was the top color in this group. Now notice that the stroke is still remaining on each of these objects. They have not changed color unless they were a part of an overlap. And if you had other special effects, um, those would also be retained in this divide action. Okay, now then let me show you something really neat about this divide tool. I'm going to select these objects here, come to the Layers panel, I'm going to twirl down, and let's just hide these and get a little bit of room. I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and drag out an ellipse. And I think I want to change the color to pink. So I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and click on this pink rectangle. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and move this up to where I have room for my flower. I'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and click on the bottom anchor, to move that rotate ball. Now I'm going to hold down the Option key and I'm going to drag and I'm holding the Option key because I'm making a copy instead of just rotating that original pedal. And then I'll release my mouse, but I'll leave this selected. And to duplicate that move, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command D and I'll press that several times until I duplicate the moves all the way around the circle. Then I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and select all of my petals. And I'm going to come over and click on the Divide Tool. Now I'll ungroup my petals using the Keyboard Shortcut Shift Command G and click on the artboard to deselect them. And you can see Illustrator has divided all of the pieces up everywhere they overlapped. And because I have already ungrouped this, I can access each one individually. I'm going to hold down the Shift key, and I'm going to click all the way around the circle. And I'm selecting this little design that Illustrator created for me and come to the Properties panel. And I'm going to change this to orange. And you'll see right away some of the neat things that you can do with the Divide tool. 
Next, we're going to use the Trim Pathfinder, and for this example, I've added some objects. I have an object that doesn't have a fill. All of my objects have a stroke, and I've added this star. Now, the blue rounded rectangle is the top layer. Let me just show you how you see that. I'll open the Layers panel. I'll close the Divide layer, and I'll click here to twirl open the Trim layer. And you can see that the blue rounded rectangle is at the top of the list, which means it's at the front on these layers. Now I'm going to select all of the layers and I'm going to use the trim tool. And when I do, Illustrator number one removed the strokes off of the objects. And number two, it removed the unfilled object, which I had. It's always going to remove any unfilled objects that are selected. Now the different objects are grouped together and I need to ungroup them, keyboard shortcut, shift command G. Then I can click on the artboard to deselect them and then I can pull the rounded blue rectangle away and pull all of these away. And you'll see that Illustrator has removed the parts of any of these objects that were covered up by another object. It doesn't really matter what the top object was here. It treated each one individually. So the blue was on top of the pink square and the yellow star. So those parts were trimmed off. The yellow star was on top of the green circle and the pink square. So those parts were removed. Now when we come over to merge, let's close out this layer and open this one up here. The blue rectangle again is the front layer and we have another unfilled object, but let's see what happens. I'm gonna select all of these and I'll click on the third icon, which is the merge icon. And at first glance, when I click on the artboard to deselect it, it looks like I have the same results as when I used the trim pathfinder. If I click here and ungroup these, keyboard shortcut, shift command G, it is going to look exactly the same. So let me undo the move, keyboard shortcut, command Z, command Z, and I keep repeating that until I'm back where I was. And I'm going to change the color of the pink square to green. So I'll select it and get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and change the color. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and we'll select the objects again. I'll click on the third icon, which is the Merge Pathfinder, and we do see a difference here. I'm going to ungroup these, keyboard shortcut Shift Command G, and then I'll click on the artboard to deselect them. And when I pull the blue away, you see that the parts that were covered up by the blue have been removed. Same with the star, but what Illustrator has done is with the objects that were the same color and they were touching each other, it has merged those objects. So that's the only difference between merge and trim. If you have objects that have the same color, they're going to merge together. Okay, now we're gonna to move to one of my all-time favorite tools, and this is the Crop Tool. This amazing and powerful little tool is what makes creating seamless pattern swatches a piece of cake. I have a whole video about how to do that, and I'll link to that at the end of this training. But first, let's look at these three objects and see how it works. Let's close the Merge layer and open the Crop layer, and we see that the blue rectangle is on top. And that's really important to know because anything that is underneath this rounded blue rectangle, the top layer, is going to be visible and everything else, including the rounded blue rectangle, is going to be cropped. What happens is it becomes a mask, and so you don't see the blue rectangle, you see what's underneath it. So let's select the objects, and I'm gonna come over and click on Crop. And the only thing left showing is the part of the object that was underneath that blue rounded rectangle, which is the mask. Now let me undo that, keyboard shortcut, command Z, and let's move this blue rounded rectangle to where it's overlapping both the green circle and the pink square. I'll select these once again and come over and click on the crop tool. And this time, because the blue 
rounded rectangle was partially on the green and partially on the pink, those are now remaining. I'm going to come over and hide this group and I'll give you another example. I'm going to get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and drag out a blue rectangle. Then I'm going to get the star tool and I'm going to drag out some stars. I'm going to change the color of that so I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and let's click on this orange right here. And then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm going to drag my star while holding down the option key, and that's going to allow me to make some copies. We'll just fill this space in here like this. Then I'm going to select the back rectangle. I'm going to copy it, keyboard shortcut Command C, and I'm going to paste it in front. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command V and I'll change the color so that you can see exactly what's happening. I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and let's make this green. Now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. Remember that anything that is outside of my top layer is going to be cropped and anything that is underneath my green layer is going to show. So let's select these objects and I'll click on the crop and click on the artboard to deselect. And that is really a cool tool. Now, if you want to, you can actually even select this and ungroup it. Keyboard shortcut shift command G and you can move these stars out and divide anything up. But the cool thing about this tool is the neat way that it masks a certain area on your artboard. I'm going to undo those last couple of moves. Keyboard shortcut, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, and we'll leave it a nice pretty little star patch. The next tool is the Outline Pathfinder, and it's sort of self-explanatory, but there are a few quirks. First of all, Illustrator is going to create outlines around each of these objects, and it's going to separate out and make lines around even the overlapping parts. Now, even if these objects already have an outline, the color of the outline you're going to get when you use this Pathfinder is going to be the fill color of the objects that are selected. One thing I do want to point out here is that if even one of the objects you have selected doesn't have a fill color, then this outline pathfinder is not going to work well for you. I'll select these objects and then I'm going to come over and press the outline icon and I'll click on the artboard to deselect these and what we initially end up with doesn't look very good, but I'm going to select these outlines and come over to the properties panel and Let's increase the weight of the stroke to, uh, let's go to three points here. And now we're left with some really nice strokes. They are the color of the object fills that they are replacing. And you can see I have this blue rounded rectangle. It was overlapping the pink square. So the overlap part takes on the blue color. Same with the green circle overlapping the pink. I now have this green overlap area. And these are grouped together, but if I select them and I ungroup them, keyboard shortcut shift command G, then I'm able to move them around individually. And I'm sure you can find some great uses for dividing things up and using these outlines. Our last tool is the minus back pathfinder. And I'm going to open up the layers panel and close the outline layer and open the minus back layer. And you can see the blue rounded rectangle is on top, followed by the yellow star and then the green circle and the pink square. And that's important to know because when I select these objects, Illustrator is going to treat the blue rounded rectangle as the top layer and everything else is going to be considered the back. So Illustrator is going to remove anything that is overlapping or outside of this blue rounded rectangles shape. So let's come over and we'll click on minus back and you see what we have left. 
So now you know how to use the six Pathfinder tools that are in the Pathfinder panel. And I'm telling you, there's some really cool things you can do with these. My favorites are Divide and Crop. And Crop is the one I just can't live without because I use it so much when I'm creating the seamless pattern swatches. I think you can imagine all sorts of uses for these tools. The key is to just practice, get familiar with them, and use them on an ongoing basis. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.